Hey, here we go. Uh, information literacy number one, knowing where to find the information. Okay, here we go. Uh, so information literacy involves two things, knowing where to find information and knowing good information from bad. And this first uh, uh, video lecture, we're going to look at this first uh, step, which is knowing where to find information. And so, as I said before, step one, uh, you know, you want to find information. First off, you need to uh, know what you need to know. And while this sounds basic, it's really not. Uh, you need to think about solving problems. Uh, you need to know what you know. You need to know what you don't know. You uh, need to know what you, uh, you know, need to know. So you have to first off think about this not as I'm looking for a solution to something or I'm looking for one piece of information. You have to think about this as a process or a problem. I'm making a big deal out of this for this reason. There's something known as satisficing. And satisficing is from cognitive psychology and decision making. And it's when a person or a group will stop their problem solving process at the first acceptable solution they find. And that one sentence is really important, the first acceptable solution they find. Uh, it may not be the best solution, but it's acceptable. Uh, and you want to find the best. You don't want to just, you know, go with second best or third best or eighth best. And so many times I see students, they're trying to do a, you know, an assignment, you know, a uh, classic example is I ask them to find an article and uh, uh, evaluate it. And so what they do is they look, you know, for articles and they go and they take the first article they find that seems okay. And it may not be the best article to use. It may not be anywhere near what I talked about in the assignment, but they're going to use it. And that's satisficing. And the students have such a hard time completing the assignment because they're working with a really crappy source. And so, you know, you may think that you need to know a certain thing, so you go and look for it. But uh, what you may be setting yourself up to or setting yourself up for is to satisfy. So that is to accept the first acceptable answer, which may not be the best. So you need to think about what you really want, what do you know about the area, how can you apply what you know to help you look for what you know, and how can you apply what you know to help you evaluate what you know. Uh, so let's start out with the elephant in the room, Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is a great example of the fight between professors and the internet. And uh, I often tell my students to use Wikipedia, and students are very, very confused uh, because they uh, say, well, my other professors, every other professor I've had told me never to use Wikipedia. And, you know, I would say, well, that's a really stupid thing to do. Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. It's online. It's, uh, you know, crowdsourced. It's, you know, uh, but it's an encyclopedia, and it's a pretty good encyclopedia, as encyclopedias go. Uh, I think the reason why professors are so against it is that, in general, uh, you shouldn't use encyclopedias for college-level assignments. And in fact, you know, 30 years ago, uh, which I wasn't teaching then, was I? Nope, but I was pretty close to it. But if I would turn, if I would get a, an assignment from a student and they cited in a college level paper an encyclopedia, I would, you know, mark that as a bad thing because you should not be citing an encyclopedia in a college level class. So I think that's the explanation about why a lot of professors say Wikipedia should not be used because it's an encyclopedia and you should not be using it as a source for anything in college. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't go and consult it. Wikipedia has a great source of information and if you don't know an area you should go there and read what 
Wikipedia says so you understand what the area is about. If I ask you to do something and you have no idea what I'm asking you about, go to Wikipedia and read about it. Uh, it's a good starting place. It's not where you should end up, but it's a really good starting place. Uh, and you should then begin with what you trust. Uh, you know, I hope you trust your textbook. Uh, professors choose it. Uh, you know, it usually means that it's been peer reviewed or reviewed by uh, editors or peers, and uh, that's good. If uh, you know it wasn't the one chosen by your professor, uh, here's some heuristics uh, to help you determine if it's a good one. Uh, editions are good. Uh, if it's in its fifth edition or tenth edition, that means that it's good enough to, to be rewritten after a couple years. Uh, and do you recognize the publisher's name? Uh, that is, does it come from a good publishing house or a bad publish publishing house? And uh, now I'm going to need to talk about context uh, and background. Uh, you really should by now have a general idea of some textbook names, publisher names that you recognize and you know that are good publishing houses that the textbooks that go under these names are good textbooks. Uh, and that's another thing that you need to do is you need to start to pay attention to background information or source information. Uh, for the, you know, and let me explain why. For the last uh, uh, 20, 30 years, America's reading comprehension scores are going down while uh, comprehension scores for other countries are staying the same or going up. But America's, United States is going down. Why is that? Well, uh, it's pretty clear what's going on is that we are teaching reading to our students in elementary school, but what's going on is we're not really paying attention to the background context that students know. Uh, and one example I saw was there was a you know reading comprehension test that had uh, a passage about baseball, and you know no matter how you were trained to read a piece of text or how good you are, if you don't understand what baseball is, the 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 text is incomprehensible, and that's why Americans are doing worse on reading comprehension because we we aren't really focusing on the background information or general information. So by now, hopefully in your college career, you should recognize the name of some good publishers. And if not, then you should start to th be thinking about this. Uh, thinking out, not about getting done with assignments as quickly as possible, but learning as much as you can from the assignment and what you do. Uh, Another good trusted source of scientific journals. Uh, they may be peer reviewed or not. Uh, and hopefully by now you know how to search EBSCO and the library. PsycInfo is my favorite. Uh, so you can go to uh, you know, PsycInfo, type in something in the search field, and you'll get information. It may not be clear information or information that you can understand. Uh, you need to check this so it'll be peer-reviewed for sure, uh, but uh, it is high-quality trusted information. What about uh, Google Scholar? Uh, people forget about Google Scholar. Uh, this is Google Scholar. You find it by going to Google and typing Scholar and it'll take you there. And uh, you know I've set up my Google Scholar account my profile here so it links with York so if I search for something and if York has it it automatically tells me York has it and when I click on that link it'll take me to York's library site and to the article so uh, Google Scholar is you know a, a version of Google which only has research articles on it and it's a good uh, site to use uh, besides PsycInfo, but both are different and both are useful. So I'm not telling you to give up PsycInfo or uh, Psych Articles and go explicitly with Google Scholar. What about general Google? Uh, Google, in general, is the wide, wild, woolly internet. 
Also, Google has a search engine that searches for uh, topics or hits that are based on popularity. You don't want the popular, you want the truthful or the trustworthy. And so that's the problem with using just plain old Google is that it's not going to send you to something that's trustworthy or good. It's going to send you to something uh, that other people link to or other people open up, which may not be a good idea. Uh, but I've been talking about trust and what we need to do is we need to go across these levels of trust. Uh, as I said, textbooks and PsycInfo are things that you would trust more, Google Scholar and Google a little bit less. Uh, but these links here mean, uh, you know, check out information and corroborate information. Uh, let's say that you find a really good Google on pay on Google you find a really good page that explains something and it makes everything clear well how do you know that's really correct well you take what Google is saying or that page is saying and you compare it to information in your textbook or you compare it to information that you find in an article in Google, on PsycInfo and if that really clear page you found on Google is corroborated by what you find in the textbook or psych info, then you know to trust it. Uh, so going back and forth, you can find lots of information that you can probably trust because you can link it up to other more trustful pieces of information. And one final thing uh, before I leave part one of the lecture. Uh, I have uh, students doing a lot of work where they uh, work with each other on sources and, you know, on finding information. And you should just understand the basics about citation and uh, annotating it in terms of your trustworthiness. Uh, for example, when you state a fact, cite your source, and that's APA style. I don't need to go into that, but annotate it in terms of how trustworthy it is. That is, here's an article in APA style. And so let's annotate it. It's a peer-reviewed meta-analysis. Nothing about here tells me if it's peer-reviewed. Uh, I have to trust its title that it's a meta-analysis, but looking at it, uh, you can uh, see that it's a meta-analysis. And looking at it and looking at the PsycInfo page, you can see it's peer-reviewed. Uh, so I want to put that in. Uh, for professional journals, you can toss in the impact factor. The impact factor is uh, how often an article in that journal gets cited. Uh, so uh, the higher the impact factor, the better. Uh, 2.3 is a good impact factor. Uh, you know, not great, but good. And then the publisher is Wiley Blackwell, which is a very well-known uh, academic, uh, you know, site, academic publisher. So if you're ever going to like give a source, make sure you you know give a piece of information, cite it, so people can know what you're talking about. But also, you may want to annotate that information and uh, provide some background so people know that this is a trustworthy source, or it's not that much of a trustworthy source. Oh, by the way, uh, I had. A, how do I find the impact factor? I just uh, typed into Google Journal of Occupational and Organizational Psychology, and Google actually calculated the impact factor for me. And there's other sources you can find that, but I'll leave that up to you. And then even non-academic sources you can, uh, you know, cite in APA style or cite somehow, and also annotate, annotate the trustworthiness. Uh, for example, here's an, art, uh, an assignment that I asked students to do about unions in my industrial organizational psychology course. And so uh, they found some information on the AFT, which is a, unions, uh, a union site, and then I wanted them to check it out. So what they did, uh, what a student did was basically they uh, searched on uh, Google and found another article on the strike. and uh, they were able to say that the union story checks out and they cited the news but then they went even farther which is like what's the Oak Park Times I haven't heard of the Oak Park Times so they actually researched the Oak Park Times it's a newspaper with five reporters listed 
and it's owned by a company that owns other newspapers. So it seems like a real, a legit, but small newspaper. So uh, that's part one of uh, information literacy. We've talked about, uh, you know, different levels of a trust, uh, trying to jump across those different levels of, of trust, and then also uh, citing and annotating uh, your citations with, uh, you know, uh, how trustworthy things are. So let's uh, go on to lecture number two.